I'm Dr. Pooja Kapoor, Consultant Pediatric Neurologist, Director and Co-Founder, Continua Kids. So the topic of today's discussion is Stereotypies in Autism Spectrum Disorder. So one of the core features of autism is its repetitive, rigid uh, pattern of activities, their behaviors and interest. So stereotypies could be subdivided into vocal, non-vocal or verbal, non-verbal or motor stereotypies. To place a few examples for the understanding, like you could have seen certain children doing hand flapping, rocking of their body, uh, having ecolalia, that means repetition of the same sentences again and again. There are few children who do sniffing. So whatever you give, they will sniff it first and then they will put it in their mouth or place it back. Uh, there are certain children who would put their toys in a very uh, synchronized, in aligned fashion. So these are all the example of stereotypies. So these stereotypies are not exclusively present in autism spectrum. They could also be present in children with intellectual disability, in children with global developmental delay, or even in neurotypical children. So you could have seen children doing the nail biting, doing tapping of their feet, or uh, doing binge watching of television. So these are all stereotypies. Then why are we worried uh, for stereotypies? Because there are a lot of studies and which have stated that all those children with ASD uh, having stereotypies, they have they these stereotypies hamper the learning graph of the child. The more the stereotypies, the slower the rate of learning and uh, achievement of the goals. Also, it has been found out that all those children, as compared, if you compare the children with verbal and non-verbal stereotypies, the children with non-verbal stereotypies, they have a lower learning curve as compared to children with verbal stereotypies. So, what's the causative agent? Why these stereotypies happen? So, there's not an exact answer to mechanism of these uh, stereotypies. There are sco two schools of thought and there are two hypotheses. One of the hypotheses states that it is because of the disturbance in the sensory uh, organs that we land up into these stereotypies. That means all our sensory organs, that means the vision, the tactile, that is the touch, the vestibular, the hearing, uh, the smell, these are not in their places and their responses to the stimuli is very different landing you into a hyper-responsive or a hyper-responsive child and this is uh, the basis of the formation of stereotypies. The other school of thought is that uh, these are operant behavior. That means these are natural behavior a child is born with and these get more and more uh, typical because of the conditioning or the environment or uh, the antecedent incidents which happen before these stereotypies, before these operant behavior. So the treatment plans are totally different. So ones who believe that it's because of the sensory thing, they give sensory diet to the children. They make a sensory profile, find out which sense organs are involved and accordingly uh, plans are made to suppress these or uh, to give them a sensory diet according to their symptomatology. The other school of thought give, a, uh, they behave like they plan the treatment by giving ABA therapy. That means by giving negative reinforcement, by giving positive reinforcement. To give you an example, like suppose you have a child who feels very great, who wants to have that auditory stimulus by rotating a very hard object on the floor. So how can you stop that? So you can place a carpet below that and uh, even if he revolves, he is not going to get an auditory stimulus on that. Similarly, suppose uh, there is a child who has like verbal echolalia, he, he is getting like a uh, sensory feel of the verbal things. So what you can do is like uh, in that child you can give a toy, a musical toy to distract him and so he will be interested in that, he will lose the, his verbal stereotypy. So there are multiple examples and there are multi multiple uh, solutions based on the children's needs and uh, this is not like uh, one suit fits all. So depending on the needs of the child, the stereotypies can be minimized, can be depressed and thus giving uh, more enhancement to their learning graph. I hope I've made some sense out of this presentation. Thank you very much.